disappearing. Okay, the cops went in. He's been captured. And Nathan. Why is she still alive? Okay, they found the body. Both me and Chloe seem to be fine. That's the Everyday Heroes contest. It looks like we've won. And we're in the room playing guitar and laundry, I guess. That's being erased. We are taking a taxi. Okay. Whoa! San Francisco for the Everyday Heroes contest. I hope I did everything right this time. Local teacher. Right? Good work, David. Why don't you just hate that when you're on a plane and. Chloe! Oh, you're alive. Oh, you're alive. Yeah, don't, don't you hate that you're like on the inside of the plane? Like the inside fixed aisle, everything. The window seat, I guess. Well, sir. And you want to use the bathroom, but there's like the guy right next to you or whatever, and you can't get out, and you don't want to bother him because he's sleeping. Because I, I, mean, I like the view of the window, but at the same time, I just don't like that issue. So, uh... I just hope our plane doesn't crash. It's so weird to be in between I realities. Everything is out of focus and in the distance. I can't wait to land in Frisco. Uh, nobody calls it Frisco, so please don't. <laughs> Frisco. I can't wait to land in Frisco. I know what she means. It almost looks like... Like, even in the front, it almost... It doesn't look real. It looks surreal, is that the proper term? We're almost in San Francisco. I'm so stressed, but I'm so excited too. Uh, kind of already looked at the newspaper, what's this? Aw, oh, I haven't seen Hot Dog Man in forever. Chloe and I used to totally play the video game and watch him all the time. <laughs> when we were innocent. Hot dog man, like H A W T. Please fasten your seat and stow any electronic gear until the plane is on the ground and at the gate. Oh, that's the principal. Thank you. We're starting our descent in a few minutes. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco with clear skies and cool 60 degrees. We hope you enjoyed your trip and we thank you very much for choosing Pacific West Air. Come fly with us anytime. Ah, uh, I don't. Think so. I'm hoping these airline seats get smaller so I won't have to fly at all anymore. <laughs> so can we talk to him now? It looks like. Do you mind not whistling? Do you mind not talking to me? <laughs> And be fighting words. Be careful. I'm still between realities. And I can't focus on this one for too long. Oh, she, she, that's why. She's still between realities. That's why. How did you sleep? Hope I wasn't snoring out loud, Max. Just a bit. It's been a tough week at Blackwell. So I hope you'll forgive me. Between Mr. Jefferson and Prescott's... Things have been hectic, to say the least. I totally get it, Principal Wells. That's a smart way of telling me to stop whining. We are proud of you for representing Blackwell at the Everyday Heroes Contest. I know I'm not exactly the guide you wanted in San Francisco, 
but we all want you to have a great experience here. I already am, and we're not even there. Oh, Christ. Another nosebleed? Max, you're not just screwing around with time. Gone. We arrive at San Francisco. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're at the place. Zeit just. Zeitgeist? Uh, I, I have trouble pronouncing those kind of names. Fancy glasses. Or drinking wine or apple juice. It's been a while since I've had apple juice. I'm a big fan of cranberry juice. That's oh, I'd be so eating those cheese and crackers. I'm kind of full right now, but I, I now I have cheese and crackers in my mind. Head San Francisco is so cool, and this gallery is huge. So is the buffet. <laughs> if an event skimps on the food. You know it's a bad event. As long as I don't have to eat any caviar. This is your day, Max. You can do whatever you want. I hope you take advantage of your status and talk to as many influential people here as possible. Work the room. I don't know. I, I feel so weird, like I'm a little kid hanging with the adults. Max, after this week, you are certainly not a little kid anymore. In fact, you're a noteworthy adult being honored by your peers. Now you have to start acting like the photographer you want to be. Hell, I wanted to be in charge of a big school someday. So I started taking charge of things when I was young. <laughs> Ask my poor classmates. Max, I'm going to eat up that caviar so you don't have to. Uh, better get in there and start schmoozing. You know, I won't always be here to take charge. But you come talk to me whenever you want. Come on, Max. After everything that's happened, this should be the least scary thing you've ever done. So it seems things are going well. They kind of ended quickly. Wow, Sir Max. You did it. Somehow. I went from the dark room to this gallery. I've been through so many realities in one week. Life is... weird. I can't tell what that is. I thought the bottom was like a chair or something, and then there was like legs sticking out. I mean, that, that does kind of look like a chair, and then we tried making the figure? I don't know. I heard Mark Jefferson was supposed to be here tonight. Not anymore. That was so shocking. I have one of his monographs, too. Hold on to it. His Are you work Max is going to be serious cash. Bravo on your entry. I'm the art critic for Iris N Magazine, and we would love to include you in a piece about future trendsetters in photography. I'll send you the details this week, if that's okay. Congratulations for your piece. He wasn't even talking directly to me, he was still talking to her. <laughs> so that's a bit of a glitch. That I kind of... Not my style, but the neon is a nice representation. Oh, shit. Pretentious alert. What is a hero? The something gallery? I'm sorry. The Zeitgeist Gallery. Proud to be a participant in the 2013 Everyday Heroes National Contest, a showcase for today's future stars of photography. The winner is chosen by prestigious teachers from art schools, Mark Jefferson, who was a psychopath, and programs across the nation reveal imaginative skills and heartfelt awareness which highlight the casual heroism of those who may never appear on the news or reality shows for unrecognized deeds to the community and beyond. Celebrating each young artist and their work is as important as their celebration of our all too often invisible everyday heroes. Dot dot dot. List. Where's my name? Official winners. Okay. Max Caulfield. There we go. There I am, along with all the other winners. I should say. I saw Nathan instead. and I was like, oh shit. 
Who's this guy? We can talk to him. It's great to read all these comments. Even the mean ones. Not as good as last year's show. Jeez. It's just like the YouTube comments. Look at this Criticism print. The, the depth of field, the colors. Look oh at the bulk God. of shape. This was definitely shot with a medium format camera using a Leica 35mm lens. You can definitely find out those details. The story of a photo if you know how to look at all the details of a picture. Don't mind oh, me. This is so interesting, Matthew. I didn't think you knew about all this. I when I was younger, I did a lot of photography studies. Didn't I tell you about it, Emma? I was quite good at it, actually. Coleman, camera. Hmm, that looks familiar. This might be too meta metaphoric. Photo. Am I gonna take a photo? I don't want to do that. Aren't you from Blackwell Academy? I wanted to go there, but I didn't get in. They have such a cool program. I bet you're learning a lot. So what's the photo thing? I'm, I'm curious now. She didn't even notice. Okay. I guess we did her a little favor. That one is kind of silly. I'd say. <laughs> I would love to have this on a shelf. Someday. You called the first one silly and then this one on a shelf. What about this one? <laughs> I like. Oh, but imagine how much time it takes to make one sculpture. Well, if you know what you're doing, probably not much time. Okay, let's get out of here and go talk to the other people. Like, he said go around and talk to the people, the different artists, but it's like, we only talked to two, and we ran into, what, like, seven people? Like, I do not understand art. <laughs> okay. I do not understand art. I guess. Jeez, man, don't get too close. Hello, can I talk to you? Well, I have to say, this is the best everyday hero show I've seen since it began. All the pictures say a lot about our times. Bravo. You just, okay. I'm not even going to mention that. I guess everybody is a photographer now. Well, it depends on your view of things. That is different, loving the retro vibe. Me too. Makes me want to go buy an instant camera. Damn, I bet that really sucks. Um, excuse me. I, I just wanted to tell you how much I loved your photograph. I've seen a lot today, but there's something powerful and understated in yours. I can't wait to see much more of your work in the future. Okay. <laughs> she, like, walked behind me and kept talking. Journalist, this should be good. Hi, excuse me, you're Max Caulfield, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Sorry to bother you, but my name is Danny Lee, and I'm with the Berkeley People's Herald. I edit their art section, and I totally dig your work. Now, I know the whole ironic selfie thing is kind of played out, but there's something timeless about your images, so I I'd love to set up an appointment or, or interview with you when you get a chance. Uh, here's my card. So great talking with you, Max. You too, Danny. I didn't say anything besides yes. And that part. <laughs> Pretty much hardly talked at all. It was all him. Bad exposure, bad framing, bad picture. I could have done this so much better. Shut up. <laughs> this makes me feel so sad. Like I was back in high school. Okay. I always get so inspired whenever I come here. Hey, I love your shot. I just wanted to say congratulations, and I hope you get a lot more attention. Okay. So we talked to the journalist. We, I think we talked with her. 
No, he didn't. Hi, and there she is to save the day. Hi. You did it, Max. You're a real artist. At least, for today. Nosebleed. This is really loud. Chloe! Hey, are you okay? We lost uh, you there for a second. I'm okay. Uh, jet lag. High altitude. Oh, you left the ringer off, idiot. Oh, come on. Please answer. What? Oh, no. Chloe, where are you? I'm so fucking scared. I'm, I'm by the beach. I'm Chloe, so can you hear me? Hello? Does this mean we're still Hello? Leaving, Chloe? Oh my god. The tornado was real. Oh, I didn't fix shit. Chloe will die. Arcadia Bay is going to be destroyed. It's only her and Principal Wells. There has to be a way to stop this. For good. There it is. I have to find a way to access my selfie. Okay. Um, I apologize, but there's going to be a lot of reading here. If you don't like it, um, I'll maybe just stick up a little time stamp where you can skip ahead. This is more just for the story and for my understanding as well. Um, What is this? Okay, I remember this part. Remember that? Okay. Uh, okay, this is the moment where all the clues come together. Okay. Basically, where we were is what we were. Uh, hit the road. We were both quiet and excited. It's hard to explain the feeling. Even with all the horrible things happening, I found myself thinking that Chloe and I were part of some greater mystery that involved time, space, and all our fates. I've never had much faith. Not the Kate Marsh kind, anyway. But I couldn't believe we were being set up for doom after everything that's happened this week. But I wasn't prepared for the dark room. The coordinates led us to an old abandoned farm owned by the Prescott family, and I shouldn't have been surprised that it was actually housing a weird, secure bunker that was filled with Prescott memor memorabilia and worse. I think I already read that. Um, there was Evil Ground Zero. This place was at cupboards filled with name red binders, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't even want to think about the images we saw of Kate Marsh, Marsh posed unconscious with that motherfucker, Nathan Prescott. She didn't know the truth about what happened to her, even if she couldn't remember all the awful details. And then Rachel Amber delicately composed photographs of her drugged and all over Nathan like some kind of sick goth couple. I couldn't bear to look at Chloe's face as she looked at the photos of her abused angel. I felt nauseated. All the hope I was feeling feeding Chloe felt like vapor. And then we saw exactly where Nathan had taken his, his vicious layout with poor Rachel in the junkyard. We finally found Rachel Amber, dead and buried. I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry. Chloe, I'm sorry. Kate, I'm sorry. Wait, I, re I read that wrong. Uh, dead and buried. I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry, Chloe. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry, William. Fuck you, Arcadia Bay. High school should be the best years of our life. I've heard over and over from my parents and other experts. Fuck do they know. Tell that to Rachel Amber or Kate. I've never seen Chloe so cold and hard. She w won't let go of the gun. 
so we have to find Nathan before Chloe kills him. And if that happens, it will be hard to rewind. But we're as close to the end of this nightmare as possible, so I have to block out those images of Kate Marsh and Rachel Amber that will be burned into my, retina for, my retinas forever. There's still a final secret to uncover, and nothing is going to stop us now. Not even a goddamn tornado. A little late for that. Well, I mean, I guess it happened after we fixed everything, but... Chloe and I pulled up to Blackwell's parking lot and arrived at the end of the world party. Oh, the irony. We had to get rid of poor Warren Fast, who wanted to bask in his alpha gl glory and hang out with Chloe and me. I can't put another one of my friends in danger. So bizarro to see all the students dressed up in expensive outfits or pre-Halloween costumes. Talking and laughing and smoking and drinking, as if there wasn't a serial killer going to the same party, or the town wasn't in eco-danger. As if to rewind me of... R rewind. As if to remind me of Arcadia Bay's ticking doomsday clock, I actually saw two moons in the sky over the horizon, or that's what it looked like briefly before the clouds rolled over. I squinted and actually rubbed my eyes like a dork just to make sure my iris wasn't foggy. Was this another sign or an uh, environmental illusion? Other people saw it too, except Chloe didn't see anything besides vengeance. So she went into the gym looking for Nathan before I could catch up. Nathan doesn't know that he's running out of time too, no irony intended. We are. My first and last Vortex Club party, flashing lights and DJ Doom. I swear I read this already. Is it starting from what I left it on? Okay, I'm probably just going to cut that part out because... <laughs> So I apologize guys, uh, when I opened the book it started on page 63 which had stuff that was from like the last video I made of this I guess and um, from episode 4 so it had stuff, I was reading stuff that had already happened but here I believe is, <coughs> pardon, here I believe is where uh, it is where where we have to start reading basically. October 11th, I guess. I watched Chloe die again, killed by my favorite teacher. Why? Because we were stupid and let Jefferson trick us with a phony text. So we ended up back at the junkyard and fell right into his trap. We should have called the police the second we found Rachel, but I had gone along too far with Chloe. I keep thinking I'm invincible, that I'm a real everyday superhero, but no, I'm just Max Caulfield. Maybe all my powers are an accident of fate, or am I being punished like Chloe? What have we done to deserve all this pain? What did Rachel do? Kate? William? Then there's Mark Jefferson. I can't ever call him Mr. again. I'm still shocked that we turned out... I'm still shocked that we turned out to be the one hiding behind the dark room. That we... That he turned out to be the one hiding behind the dark room but if I think back on those pieces of time Jefferson has been dropping hints all along it makes me sick to think how long he's been doing this for and to whom is that supposed to be Chloe I don't know it's kind of freaky looking the needle I can still feel that needle on my skin thank god I can't remember Jefferson posing me for most of his sick session Imagine all those other people who had to suffer through that horror, like Rachel and Kate. That made me determined to get out of that room. At least to stop him and save Chloe. I had to use my focus rewind on multiple photos so often that I even got focused. Conf focused. <laughs> confused. Worse still, I knew I was screwing around with various realities again, but I had no other choice. Chloe would not die in a junkyard next to Rachel Amber. And there was no fucking way I was going to let Jefferson to be the last person I ever saw. It's hard to even imagine myself in that studio alone with Jefferson acting like that. Everything was so neat and sterile. But it felt like the filthiest place on earth. If I didn't have this ability to bend time, what would I have done? What could I have done? 
Sometimes I felt removed, like I was looking at myself going through this hell, but thanks to Jefferson's class photo, he personally helped me to escape. I've never... I'll never forget the way Jefferson looked at me. So cold and mean. Thought I heard something. I felt like I was on one of those awful true crime shows my mom binge watches. How does somebody become evil? He actually shot Chloe in the head. Just like that, motherfucker. I wish the police had taken Nathan in. After I told Principal Wells that he drugged Kate, he might still be alive and maybe he would have taken down Jefferson too. Wow. I can't believe I was able to focus and rewind into my selfie all the way back to art class on Monday. I turned in I turned in my photo for the contest after I sent a text to David warning him about Jefferson. Phew. The only reason I haven't had a total meltdown is the fact that I do have this incredible power. I have to use it right for once, and maybe never again. It was weird to be in class with Jefferson, like I wasn't just tortured by him in an underground bunker. I saw him for the first time as he is, a creepy ma manipulative psychopath filled with bullshit. He uses art and passion to seduce people, but behind that there's nothing but hate and per perversion. I only pray that I can fix this timeline, not not fuck it up. Max to the future. It feels like I finally made things right. Chloe is alive, David Madsen became a real everyday hero by busting Jefferson and his dark room, along with Nathan and his father. The Prescotts have lost control of Arcadia Bay. Now I'm the official everyday hero, on my way to San Francisco with Principal Wells, who is a lot more funny and laid back when he's not stressing about Blackwell Academy. It's hard for me to totally relax, but all those pieces of time seem to be falling into place. Now, I'm just gonna... There's still a star there, I don't know why. Oh, okay, it goes away there. So now we have more pictures, the one we took there. And... Squirrel... A burning whale? That... Is interesting. Go ape... Skull equals smokes, beer bottles, Chloe Price, love forever, car, tornado, duct tape, and looks like Kate, and then tech. Um, okay, now we go up. No fucking way. Chloe can't die again. I have to save her. Are we supposed to... I have to find a way to access... I have to find a way to access my selfie. Uh... Do I go... To like, episode one? Well, where did I take a selfie? Is it episode two? No. Okay, I don't know. Um, can't talk to him. Cheese and crackers. It's not wine. It looks like, uh, what that, whatever that stuff is called that can explode if you shake it too much. Excuse me. Do I go to the... I do not understand art. Do I go to the image? I guess everybody is a photographer now. Ah, that's what I thought. Excuse me, I'd love to ask you a few questions about your work. Sorry, but... Max Caulfield, right? Uh, Tell me what kind of instant camera you um, use. Yeah, can we talk later? Thanks. I literally do not have the time to deal with everybody. It's different every time, too, which is the weird thing. Do it. 
do it, do it, do it, do it. Thank you. Oh, that would suck if, we, if it just kept doing it. Let me out the f out of here.